Good morning, good morning, family and friends. And thank you for tuning in to episode four, Diary of a Preacher's Kid, with myself, Renee Newman, and my big sis, Octavia Somerville. We are glad that you are taking time out of your schedule to support us. We appreciate all the love. Today, The focus of our show is honoring our fathers in light of this being Father's Day weekend and tomorrow being Father's Day. So we want to discuss the qualities of a good father. And we want to discuss your fathers, old father figures in your life who have really impacted your lives, made a difference given you some major life lessons. We just want to discuss that. But we are going to talk about me and my churchy self. Yes, come on. As we like, yes, we are churchy. We want to let you all know some of the funny moments. Yes. That we look back on and we're like, oh my God, that was like really churchy. So my me and my churchy self, When we grew up, again, we grew up in the traditional apostolic church, and uh, we were taught women's heads should be covered, especially when you pray. And so every time we prayed, we made sure our heads were covered to honor God, honor our covering. And even if we didn't have a head covering, we would get a paper towel, a Kleenex, a washcloth, or even at bedtime, we would get the covers and put our heads under the cover. So being a child, spending the night at my cousin's house, and it was bedtime, and we had to say our prayers before we went to to bed. I'm sorry. And I get down to say my prayers, and I pull the cover, I mean the the sheet and the comforter, and (laughs) submerge my head under the cover. I say, okay, we're getting ready to pray. Getting ready to pray. Yes. And she was like, are you getting ready to suffocate yourself? Why did you just put your head under the covers? And so that was definitely my me and my churchy self. Mm -hmm. And I can recall... Um, with that when we entered the sanctuary and by chance you didn't have your head covering on it's just like you ran out immediately and you would have to get the paper towel a bobby pin place it on your head and then you went into the church and you praised the lord so this was me and my churchy self yes walking around with the paper towel and yes. the Kleenex on your head So we thank you for that. And like I said, you all, I've been getting some messages and text messages where people would share their me and my churchy self moment. So the next time uh, we have our show, I'll open up with some that was shared by you all. And I will tag you all in your me and my churchy self moment. But moving forward, we want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, the father figures, all of those, the male mentors. We definitely want to make sure that this show honors you for your greatness, for your sacrifices. You all deserve recognition as well. And I know that... um, Society is known to short the dads on their recognition. But on Diary of a Preacher's Kid, 
we want to make sure you're a big deal to us yes. today. So we want to first start off by honoring our dad, Bishop Matthew C. Newman. Yes. Happy Father's Happy Day, Father's Daddy. Day, we love Daddy. you. We honor you. Yes. And we thank God for you, yes. your impact that you have had on so many people's so lives many and that people. you continue to have on our lives as well. You are a true jewel. Yes. Um, so, Octavia, you want to get us started with um, honoring our fathers? Okay. We're just going to follow through with a few pointers for the responsibilities and qualities of a dad. And some of what we have listed here Um, Some of the responsibilities would be to lead, Mm -hmm. to seek God's will, Mm. to pray and worship, to protect, and to provide. And um, truly, being a dad, when you look at it, it is a great responsibility alone. And most of the time, most men do not share their level of stress. They don't communicate how big of a responsibility that it has impacted their lives. So we always want to give them honor, make them feel appreciated and loved, and the sacrifices that they make, make it known to them and let them know, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We love you. We know the struggles that you go through trying to provide, pay bills, make sure and we are protected, <laughs> and take it care. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We don't, you know, you, you're responsible for making sure nothing is cut off. The vehicles are running good. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. a great responsibility. And we want to acknowledge and give you all the recognition that good fathers are hard to find. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we want to honor those who have stepped up to the plate and are stepping up to the plate and carrying out their responsibilities in their homes, their marriages, among their children, being good providers, protectors, those who are covering their families in prayer, which is very important. So we want to acknowledge you and thank you for all that you do. Absolutely. Yes, you all deserve that. And what I want to focus in on is working in child welfare. It is such an honor to see when children fall in unfortunate situations and they have to enter foster care. And the mother may not be a viable option for the child to return to or go to if she's never cared for the child. And I am so proud when I'm looking over various cases and I see that dad is the one showing up. I want to get my kid back. And, you know, to be able to see a dad try to get stable housing Mm -hmm. to visit regularly with his child to make sure I'm showing up to prove the point to himself and to the courts that I am worthy of raising my child. Yes, It's very difficult. And sometimes a lot of society people automatically think, especially with the black family, because, you know, I, my practice focus is recovering the black family. So even though the dad may not be in the home, the dad is very active in the picture. That's what we want to go back to where, okay, maybe my parents didn't work out, Mm -hmm. but guess what? I am still being raised by both parents. And that is a strength when you can co-parent. That is a major strength when you can be husband and wife, raising your children together, understanding your roles. Um, In our household, as we shared, my dad and mom, they have four biological daughters. 
But they ended up fostering three boys because my dad wanted a son. And the tables quickly turned when we raised our first foster brother. And my dad had to put his foot down and let my mother know, absolutely, we can't raise him like we did our girls, especially with the background that he had come from. So even not being biological, understanding that I have to shift what was his norm to show him what it looks like to have a strong work ethic, to earn honest money, to see my dad coming in from road trips, from, you know, being a truck driver, getting up in the morning. We've shared on previous shows that, My brother thought that when everyone was getting up in the morning and getting dressed, that we were going to the city to work a corner. So to teach, no, my dad would bring his 18 wheeler home and he would get in the truck. And my dad is a truck driver to be out in the yard on the John Deere. So once my parents became foster parents and they specifically wanted boys, yes. my mother was involved. My, my dad was the primary parent yes. Yes. when it came to raising the boys. Mm-hmm. We could sleep in on Saturday mornings, but daddy would get up and grab Dante, get up and start getting ready. Yeah. And by the time we woke up, they were out haul- going to the county landfill, yep. doing lawn work, mm-hmm. going into the city, taking care of rental properties. To this day, Dante, no matter what type of work he does, he still has his own landscaping tree service business. Yes. Because of what he learned. Absolutely. So we want to look at those qualities that fathers place in their daughters as well as in their sons. My father told something he didn't tell his daughters. He told the boys, every man should have a truck because no matter what goes on in your life, you can always make a job and create income. Yes. If you have a truck and some equipment, even if you haul stuff, everybody knew my father yes. kept a pickup. Yes. So he would always haul something for somebody. And again, to this day, my brother Dante, the oldest, he has always kept a truck. All, right, All of the brother-in-laws have trucks. Yes. Every oh, single no, one. Hold just All wait of a them. Every last one have a truck and a trailer. Yeah. To hitch it to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go on. Give me my little sign. <laughs> Go ahead. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold just one minute. Oh, uh, well, you've been waiting to get there. I had a word fumble. I said, kitch it to. I messed up. <laughs> So, yes, that is the impact that we saw my dad, what he put in to the males. And it trickled into the ministry. Yes, it did. It had a major impact. And uh, and to add to it, the additional qualities would be dependability, Mm -hmm. being there through thick and thin, their involvement, compassion, Valuing the mother, mm-hmm. empathy, mm-hmm. being verbally expressive, mm-hmm. and being human. Being human. Mm-hmm. And so, with that being said, the involvement is always besides God, your family, mm-hmm. spending time with your wife with your children, being involved in their activities, being involved in their lives, showing compassion when they're going through some rough times. Always understand they can't be you. Mm -hmm. They are a part of you, but you have to allow them to be who they are and understand that with compassion. Mm -hmm. And the other is valuing the mother. Mm -hmm. The relationships may be strained, 
but your son and daughter should still see you respect the mother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. valuing her, and also the empathy, being understanding, mm -hmm. being concerned, and then verbally expressive, meaning you know how to address them with respect. Although they are children, respect goes two Absolutely. ways, not one way. That's really big. You cannot think that you can disrespect, degrade, and put down your child. And when they are expressing themselves, you then turn around and say, you are disrespecting me. You are being disobedient. Respect goes two ways. Mm -hmm. Being human mean, I'm flawed and all, but I'm your parent. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I've had some bad days, good days. I'm here just like I made it. You can too. So those are just some of the general qualities with dependability, knowing that I can depend on my dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I need a helping hand or advice, or just a hug or encouragement, I have my dad. Yes, that's important. Yeah, everybody wants to feel like, for me, I always say my dad is my superhero. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care if he's 28 or 88. He is still my Superman. Always. The cape never comes off. The cape never comes it off. It never uh -huh. comes never. off. Because when we were in the, my cape might come off. <laughs> no, your cape <laughs> don't come off. <laughs> because there's always value. When my dad would be in the backyard, jumping rope with us, riding bikes, playing volleyball, badminton, to when he got pneumonia in both lungs and had to be hospitalized, he still had the cape on. Still had it on. Still, still had, had it on. It on. And we still could see the strength, the tenacity mm -hmm. not to give up. Yeah. Keep pushing. He said, I may not have gone as far with my education, but you all be all that you can be. And our last name by Newman, he let us know that means something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want you to represent me well. Mm -hmm. Newmans don't give up. They don't quit. That's so this is what us. we heard all the time. Mm -hmm. And if we had down days, we would sit around the table, cry. We would laugh. Mm -hmm. We would rejoice together. And that is the impact of a good father. Mm -hmm. See, it's one thing just to be make a child, but it's another thing to raise that child and to take on your roles and responsibilities as a leader. That's right. And even if you're not well off, you may not have the finances. You may have had a child under less than desirable circumstances, mm -hmm. but you can have a physical presence yes. to plant a seed in your child to say, I'm here, mm -hmm. so that they could feel what you want to give and impart to them. Come on. Come on. Hey, man, can you hear me? We you got you, brother. Got me? Okay. I just want to say, what about, is it, is it never too late to be a father? Is I, it ever too late to be a father? Is it ever too late? Yes. Um, I feel that as long as there's breath in the body, there's hope. Now, the type of father you can be, because some people don't connect with their fathers or parents, but we're focusing on fathers until they're well in their older age. So, yeah, it might be too late for you to run up and down the basketball court, but I feel like it's never too late if you had missing years where the dad was absent. As long as there's breath in the body to say, I'm sorry. It's an opportunity. Now, it's up to the child. And then we look at the impact that the mother may have on the relationship. But for a father, I would say, if you can connect with your child and your child is open to hearing from you, for whatever reason it 
is or may have been that you weren't in your child child's life, make it right. So if and then when that opportunity comes, if you can correct it verbally, then perhaps actions can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I believe as long as there's breath in the body and everyone is willing to forgive. Mm -hmm. And we talked about unforgiveness being one of the roots of bitterness, you know. Um, So as long as there's breath in the body, I'm a believer that there is hope. And I feel the same way that there is always hope and you have to fight for the relationship Mm -hmm. and that you can mend Mm -hmm. and you can come together. You can acknowledge your mistakes, your errors, and let them know, I can't go back and change anything, but I can change the here and now. Right. And I love you. Mm -hmm. And I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know you. I want you to know me. I want us to enjoy each other because life is short. And no matter what, the absence of a father out of a child's life, a lot of people think that, oh, they can continue on, but it's always like a missing puzzle piece in that child's life. I believe because that. Because you too. always want to know your identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's I something about that. still, be it a son or a daughter, they still want to know mm-hmm. their dad. Who am I? Mm-hmm. What's the other part of my what makeup? Is a, yes. Yeah. I believe that and, you know, that's what I have observed and witnessed with my friends who may not have one of their parents in their lives. And also for single parents, divorcees, you know, I have friends who have who are both. And I honor my girlfriends because no matter what went on with their exes or what have you, yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, specifically. Yeah, that's really big to say, you and I didn't work out, but you better be here for this child. And, you know, yes, children can feel the tension, and you all have to work through your own issues, but I'm thankful that my single friends did not stop their child's fathers from coming around, nor did they speak negatively to the children about their dad. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they'd go through and the children became of age to be aware of conversation, we would go to another room or we'd have a conversation. They say, okay, we got to change the conversation. Here come the kids. So that's all they knew was daddy. They didn't hear mommy saying all this negative stuff. They were there, even if the father was inconsistent. If we have every other weekend scheduled, I'm going to have your child ready. I will not disappoint your child. But just know that it's my arms that holds this child when you don't show up. So then it got to a point where the child would question, well, where's daddy? Is he really coming? Because you know you can't play with kids and tell them you're going to do something and don't show Mm -hmm. up. And I've actually talked to youth who have developed bitterness for their, we're we're talking about dads by saying, I remember he'd say he was going to come get me and he was going to bring me a bike and we were going to ride through the park. And my mother got me ready, packed my bags, and she told me I could wait in the house. But I sat on my front step because I was so excited. And the mother would check on him, check on him. I'm fine, Mommy. He's coming. He's coming. And when it started getting dark, she says, baby, come on in the house. So that child was so disappointed repeatedly. It wasn't that the mother was talking negatively. That child, it locked into the memory. My dad failed me. So then it's for the dad to clean it up because now you're tampering with the child's trust in their father. And also abandonment. Abandonment, rejection. Your hope. Anger. So then when it was time to come again, he's not coming. 
And then, and this was a little boy. So more and more, I don't want to go with him. Mm -hmm. So when the dad had a good moment, come on, let's go. You don't want to go with your father? No. No, So then you got boys getting swole in the chest. I ain't going with you. Mm -hmm. So that's where the dad looking at the mother like, you done turned my son against me. It's like, no. I was here and she had to remind him oh what about you're bringing him a new bike and you're going to ride through Mm -hmm. the park in the new bike Mm -hmm. do you know he sat out on that front step for three hours and you hate to give people that mudslinging moment Mm -hmm. but you can't tell me I created this bitterness Mm -hmm. and also we have to realize the impact um, on your childhood the impact of the father because now this will impact that child's future relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Their outlook on the man as a role model. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially the young lady. Yes. 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 But d- definitely. So keep your word. And if you can't, anything comes up, call. Mm-hmm. Let them know. You know, hey, um, um Something came up, but we'll make up for it. Give me a ring. Have communication. Mm -hmm. And to me, when you have a lack of communication, you negatively impact that child. And the faith and hope and trust diminishes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They got me. Yeah. (laughs) Um, when it comes to daughters and their dads, Ooh, yes, let's go there. The effects okay. a good dad is the mirror to young men for how to love, treat women, and for that daughter. For me, it teaches the young daughter how to be loved. Yes. How to receive definitely, love. Definitely, definitely. How a man should treat a woman. Yes. So not only through observing the dad and the mom's relationship, but how does daddy treat me? Mm-hmm. Um, we have daddy and daughter dad. Mm-hmm. And you walk with your little girl. Mm-hmm. Daddy can tell you, okay, hold my hand, but you should not be walking close to the street. That's right. A man will always. Little things like that. Little things Mm -hmm. that you remember. Opening the door. Mm -hmm. Things like that. That's right. (laughs) Hit the lock. That's right. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yeah, you let (laughs) yourself (laughs) in. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) <laughs> Those are the little things mm-hmm. that when you're going out with your daughter, you're showing it with mom, That's but then right. you are being an example. Then you're talking as they get older, um, especially high school, dating age, mm-hmm. when your dad can tell you, you know, oh, He's he's spitting that game. Let me tell you, my father was a pastor, but he was super cool. Yes. And he knew game. He knew. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh no, he lying. Watch him. Uh So if you if we were talking on the phone, watch how he treats you when he sees you in person. Right. Watch. Now, all this conversation, just watch. And again, emphasizing being a man of your word. Do not allow a man to switch up and treat you one way behind closed doors and in the public differently. Yeah. Yeah. So things of that sort. Um, When we started driving, we knew about oil changes, changing the tire. We would manage, you know, those maintenance things because we were all girls. But those are things that my dad told us to be alert of. How does a man take care of his car? He said, now, you see that man? He is hard on a car and it's bad when a man gets a car. And I don't know if it was someone you all were dating Octavia but somebody wouldn't even take the car for an oil change and my father was like no he's sorry and then you know another example I was cracking up laughing 
<laughs> because being in the church and being affiliated with various services and all, we would have groups come in and sing. Mm-hmm. So this one particular member of the group, we saw him like one Sunday and then maybe a month or so ago, we saw him again. He was still driving on a donut. Yes. <laughs> Yes, they came and to my, sing. And my father yep. right then and there said, see, you watch men like that with no responsibility. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He said, because the donut is what you lean on when something happens to the tire. Uh-huh. So if you jacking up the donut, yeah. what do you have to rely Why on? Why weeks later? Now, I, am you, yes. <laughs> I am delivered. Yes. I am delivered. Delivered. And it's funny because that particular guy was trying to talk to me. Yes. And he pulled (laughs) off the parking lot and we saw him coming down like Northern Parkway or something. And we looked and said, oh, that's him. And that old lopsided car. And then a few weeks later, <laughs> we see him in driving around in the city, the same donut, the same little lopsided uh-huh. car. Yeah, it, that was it. That was totally it. So those are the things that take time that a good father does with a daughter. Mm-hmm. Takes time out to show them daddy-daughter dates, um, talking to them about self-esteem. It's one thing when your mother can talk to you about your hair, your skin tone, how to dress, all of that. But it is important for a father to also make his daughter feel like a little princess. You are beautiful. Have that security so that as the daughter gets older, she's not chasing those compliments from a man. Why? Because my dad told me I was beautiful. And I don't have to show all of my body parts or, you know, be half naked. My dad is telling me in my Easter dress, I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. My dad is talking to me about men. Now, growing up, all right, I don't want to see y'all sitting on the laps of no man under no circum. And these were the stern talks where my dad would look us in the face. You do not. I don't care how well we know the family. But you do not. If somebody says, come sit on my lap, no. my da- And he told us, you say, my daddy said, I do not sit on a man's lap. Hello. That's right. So these are the things that a good father pours into the daughter. Uh-huh. And uh, my father would often make himself available. Ever so often, he would meet with us and say, everything all right? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. And he would, we would talk to him, tell him our encounters, and he would always say, when you are dealing with a man, you make sure he's bringing something to the table. Mm-hmm. And you step back. That's just like uh, when I started uh, wanting to choose to work for law enforcement, And my father, I wanted to take it further and literally become a police officer. Mm -hmm. But I was single, and my dad says, uh, I wouldn't recommend for you to take that step. He says, because there are certain moments that it can really impact a woman in a negative way with the control and with certain conditions of seeing the men, you know, behind the bars or at their lowest. Mm -hmm. So I took into consideration for that, and I didn't go with that because I could understand that where I was presently at when he was talking to me, I was already seeing a negative example of a man. Mm. So, therefore, I did not want that to impact my future relationships. Mm -hmm. So, my father was able to really guide me on that because 
I was always coming home telling him my experience dealing with my encounters with the position that I was holding. So um, I'm very grateful to God for our father because he was letting us know, be all that you can be, but don't have no man coming into your life using and abusing you mm -hmm. and don't have nothing to offer or show for it. That's right. He said, every day we're on this earth, we should see where we have accomplished things. We are maintaining things. Mm -hmm. So he said, don't always look at the looks, what people have, because they can have the finest of everything and about to lose it. Oh, my God. Yes. So, you know, my father started us very young. And this is for uh, raising daughters and sons, mm -hmm. the positive effects of having a good father about finances. Mm -hmm. hello, hello. Again, we would sit at the table. They would show us bills. My parents didn't play around. You know, if we were acting like, you know, money just grew on trees, there were times my father would sit down with all their income and then lay out all the bills. Now, look, and we literally would sit and watch he and my mom pay bills. Then he taught us how to write a check just to sit down. So when I look at it, qualities of a good father is securing your children emotionally teaching them about finances. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we really learn about those things. Mm -hmm. Then business, learning how to take a risk business-wise, mm -hmm. learning that it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. And some of your best successes will come from your worst failures. That's right. Just when you fall flat on your face and you want to give up, you got to go back and look at that process and say, what did I do wrong and how can I make it better? The other part that my dad instilled in his daughters is not to be a damsel in distress, but to balance it out and let a man be there for you. Come on, that finger went oh, up fast. <laughs> now, I think for, and you know, just, just in relationships, since uh -huh. we're talking about being a good father, the women who I dated, since I'm not dating anymore, amen? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I'm yeah. getting myself uh, He got that, that disclaimer. I am not dating anymore, but in my past. But in my past. <laughs> I can say that um, the women who I had the most issues with was the ones that didn't have a father. Uh -huh. I would believe that. They didn't yes. have a father. So either, either I became the sugar daddy mm -hmm. or other things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Amen. Mm -hmm. And maybe they were chasing their fathers down yes. in the relationship with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where they were unfulfilled, you're gonna make up for what my daddy didn't do. Right. Or and that's a that's a hard, that's yeah. a hard thing to do. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm Sabotaging sorry. the relationship. Already from the beginning. I already know you're gonna leave. Uh -huh. Right. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of that, those are daddy issues that we talk about. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, men say that. I've seen several guys scratch their heads and say, Man. This one got some serious daddy issues yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that right. I can't repair. Mm -hmm. So that is true. And then you have the one you have opposite extremes when you're dealing with a young lady who has daddy issues. Either she's going to be really clingy and really uh -oh. chase down your affection to try to make you love her. What do I have to do to make you love me? Okay, she will just vie for your love and affection and attention. Then you have the ones who will take it out in anger, lash out. You're no good, just like her father and this and that, you know. And then you have the ones who want to prove that I don't need a man. Mm -hmm. Now, that can be on both ends, those who have a father and those who don't. Because those who have a father and they were raised to be independent and not rely on a man, 
those are the ones who can go to the extreme and emasculate a man. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a balance there. Mm -hmm. And if you have that father figure in your life that can tell you, because my dad also would talk to us as well as other women being a pastor saying, okay, you're bringing work home with you. You cannot cheat, treat your uh -oh. husband. Uh, you can't cheat. That's uh, what the that's what the message was. You cannot cheat. <laughs> you cannot cheat. Oh, you cannot treat your husband. <laughs> Thank you. I was gonna try to move on. I was gonna try to I was gonna try to move on. But I had to catch it. I had to catch it. You cannot treat your husband if you are in a leadership position at work. The lesson that my dad would teach both within the family and within the ministry, counseling couples, for either of them in a leadership position, don't bring work home with you. Don't treat your husband like your subordinates at work. And yeah. that that can be a huge problem because we spend so much time on our jobs. So that's what we're looking at as far as how women treat men. Mm -hmm. Octavia's looking at it with law enforcement or, you know, the um, corrections facilities, all those types of things. And you could either look down on them. Yep. You might get frustrated, all oh, these men, that's a waste mm -hmm. of a good man, this mm -hmm. and that, you know, or you're at work and you just feel like you run in the show and you get home and you're trying to run your husband. We don't mm -hmm. want to emasculate. We want to honor and we want to be honored. Amen. So that's the effect mm -hmm. that a, hus a father has positively on raising a daughter. Right. Okay. And I know um, for sure with the shaping of a daughter that father needs to be in her ear he needs to let her know she's loved she's beautiful i am with you communicate with me let me know who the guy is it shouldn't be so that i mean and this is a different society from the way we were raised but when we started dating the guy had to come had to our parents house to our house and meet our parents shake before my we hand. even started <laughs> dating had to, had to shake the hand look we had to eyes. look yep. him in the eye look me in eyes, him boy. Out, look me in eyes. talk to him see what he's about get a feel for it and mm -hmm. you can believe you me after we would come home my father always had his conference sessions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd let us <laughs> know and see, my oh, father. No, wait a minute. There you go. Give oh, it up. Just one minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And my father, he mm. by he's naturally a quiet man. Very much so. Not a weak man. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. humble man. Mm -hmm. Not a weak man. He mm -hmm. observes. Spiritual very observant. Yes. And yeah. he has a strong gift of discernment with yes. people. Yes. He really, really does. Yes. And he pays attention. Um, when I moved into my home, my dad always let me know, you are taken care of. Mm -hmm. I went through on a job and I was being mistreated. I was coming home stressed and crying. And my dad, one time and one time only. One time. He says, nay, you don't have to take that. Yep. He Don't says, as thing. long as I am working, yes. you will Living. want for nothing. Yes. I, w I had graduated. I jumped right into a job, and I felt like I had to take it. He says, you don't. And he told me, you can quit whenever you want. Yep. And I quit that job. Mm -hmm. And I got a job, you know, within a matter of weeks. And I thank God for that. Yes. Amen. And he, I'd like yeah. to just say also that with uh, my father, he gave us two options once we graduated from high school. Okay. All right. And the two were either you get a job 
or you go to college and you can work Mm part-time. But we had to have some means Mm -hmm. of income. Mm -hmm. And he taught us balance that when we went to school, we still had part-time jobs. Amen. Amen. All through college. And being under his roof, we had to be in church. Yep. And you Hello. had to be on time. No matter yeah. what you did, you in my house, you're going to church. Uh-huh. everybody in this house gets up and goes to church. Yes. Even That's the foster right. kids. Yep. Everybody. Everybody. Right now. I don't care if you were out. Yeah. Yep. If you were out late at night, Uh that's your problem. Try to sneak (laughs) in late if you want. Uh Oh, it would give him great pleasure. Get up. Uh (laughs) Like, okay. You gonna pray now? That's right. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. And don't be on your knees sleep either. So those are qualities that were important for daughters, for daughters. And, you know, even dating, my dad would say, is is this young man paying attention to your car? Mm -hmm. If he hears little noises, Mm -hmm. does he have concern and compassion for your safety? Things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You're you you're in Carroll County. You know we didn't date anybody in our area. So are these guys checking to see if you get home safely? So it, it was those little things that meant a lot. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to move to good qualities that a father instills in his son. Yes. Okay. And, All right. Um, this is very very interesting. When we were doing our research and just seeing the impact of a father and we have we covered some of these uh yeah okay uh here is father-son relationship develop the strength to face life Mm -hmm. challenges that the boys face when growing up Mm -hmm. now now do that has a lot to do with because i find now that the young men that i deal with they're very emotional because emotion, how how does that emotion come out? How the emotion comes out in anger, uh-huh. crying, mm-hmm. um, can't take nothing. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. not. And so when you go into teaching the young man to be strong and mm-hmm. to be that, just not. It's like that's what I'm teaching my son right now. No, you can deal with it. Deal mm-hmm. with the issue. If you did something wrong, say you did it wrong. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it moving. All right, correct it. Right. It's never too late to correct. It's never too. Never too. I would say on that one, a good father, because again, the impact that a man has on his son or males that he's in their life is to acknowledge the emotion. Let them know, I'm looking at you and I can tell you look frustrated doing this. And getting them to label and identify the emotion that they're going through. Because what we want to do is break up that pattern that, you know, it's soft for a man to do this and to cry. Sometimes, you know, okay, wait, but I see it. Mm -hmm. See, you're acting it out. But go back to the basics. Use your words. How is this task making you feel right now? Because... There's no, uh, the option to give up is not available to you. You can't give up. You can't give up. Yeah, so getting them to talk, because you're right, a lot of these young guys, you see them throwing things up against walls, punching a wall, you know, doing this. But for a man to teach another man or a young male about emotions yes. and processing it. That's not suck it up. You ain't no punk. No, you ain't no. soft. No. You know, going beyond that. Mm-hmm. And Amen. also Octavia has two sons. Yes. Um, also just merely relating and mm-hmm. spending time because overall Men aren't communicators. Most of them, they hold a lot in. Mm -hmm. And my husband, what he would do if our sons were going through some difficulties, some challenges that they were dealing with, we observed the behavior. Mm -hmm. Uh If it was them shutting down, going to their room, 
not talking like or mingling mm-hmm. or interacting right away, something is wrong. Mm-hmm. We should not be so busy that we cannot see or sense something is wrong with our sons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't want the street to raise them. Hello. So you have to be there, be their listening board. You got to be their encourager, their praiser, their hugger. Mm-hmm. You got to let them know it's okay to be who you are. I am here for you. Mm-hmm. I can't live your life. I can only guide you and instruct you mm-hmm. to do what is right. Because you know what? That Broadway leads to a lot of destruction and yes, regret. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But that narrow way, sometimes you're going to be on that road all alone. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going to look at you, make fun of you, make you feel as though you are the oddball. But at the end, yes, you sir. will be the winner. Yep. Yes, yes, you So will. you got to let them know you got to not try to fit in with people. You got mm-hmm. to, if they can't accept you for who you are, then you need to go somewhere else. Yes, and see that yes. self-esteem trying to fit in because a lot of men really try to challenge men. When they are smaller, they try to fight to see how strong you are. Mm-hmm. But then as you get older, now they're starting to play on your mind. Yes, That's right. Yes, because they're yes. trying to encourage you hey if you do this you steal this or you don't go to school don't listen to your mom all of that is impacting Mm -hmm. you mentally and trying to make you sound weak so you got to teach them Mm -hmm. to know and hold to what is right that's right and knowing that hey you're not like everyone else Mm -hmm. you different why are you different because I can't shine if I blend in with y'all that's Uh. right That's That's the thing. You don't have to blend in with everyone. Learn how to accept yourself for who you are. And that's something that I observed my dad as he impacted the lives of many men. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to go around here and be like everybody else. Yeah. And he would talk to my brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I understand. You know, you don't want to look weak. He understood the male ego, Mm -hmm. but don't let your ego dominate you because Uh male pride will destroy you. Uh So he would even share stories of his foolishness. Yes. That is, is yeah, Mm -hmm. uh, and I say a good quality of a dad to his son is transparency. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's transparency. Yes. Yes, You have to be transparent with especially your boys instead of saying, you know, what you do that for, you know. Um, Stop badgering and beat them down. You know, verbal abuse, Mm -hmm. a lot of kids go through that. Mm -hmm. You may not have had a dad to raise his hand and hit you, but his words Mm -hmm. left scars Mm -hmm. and bruises that the natural eye could not see. So watch your words when you're speaking to your children, period, because that is the power of a parent. Because whatever my parent tells me about myself, that's what I believe, Mm -hmm. especially in those uh, more moldable um, stages of life where you're forming my identity and my thoughts of myself. So I would say be transparent, and I I get it. I love when men are in their son's lives, but I hate, and well, it just might be me being a woman. When This is just me. Go ahead. I can't stand when men rough their boys up and punch them in the chest. You're going to take it. You're going to take it, you know. Uh, yeah, my yeah. experience is like thing. football. It's, football. It's, yeah. They really. It's, it's, you know what, I, um, <laughs> now, if my son steps out of line uh-huh. and he want to step up as a man, there then you I, that's when I do what I do. I but get it. But as that, no, nah, uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not, yo, no. Nah. Let's deal with this issue. Right. You tell me how I dealt with my issue, mm-hmm. so this is the way you should deal with your issue. If I'm not hitting walls, then you shouldn't be hitting right. walls. Right. Right. That's it. So, you That's know. Right. I get that with my male friends and big brothers, and they're like, no, Renee, this how you got to do, boys. I'm telling you. 
Yes. <laughs> also, too, since we're talking about the, you know the woman uh, with the with the father. Mm-hmm. I mean, the girl with the father. Also, the son with the father too. Um, I'm teaching my son how he should treat a woman, mm-hmm. especially if the first incident of him having that experience mm-hmm. was not good. Right. Because you don't want that child to uh, hate women right. because of the experience. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. it goes to a different area. Mm-hmm. That'd be a whole nother show. Yeah. But we're not going to talk about <laughs> it today. Amen. <laughs> but it's communication. Yeah. Again, have man-to-man talks. Sit with your son. Guess what? Ask, how did that make you feel? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can recall uh, my brothers having their first little heartbreak mm-hmm. in middle school or high school. And my mother would tell my dad, I think some little girl at school done hurt his feelings. <laughs> and my dad would go get them. I'm telling you, yeah. ride in the car. Yes. We're going to go get some ice cream and talk uh-huh. it over. And my dad would come, yeah. But to make it comfortable to speak through those vulnerable moments. And although uh, my older brother is not our biological brother, mm-hmm. what he has, what my dad has passed on to mm-hmm. him, he is passing right on down Profound. to his yes. boys. Legacy. He'll come to the house and say, Daddy, I had to go take him out for a talk. Some little girl at school hurt his feelings. Mm -hmm. And he tells my dad, I did just what you did. We went out for a ride. We were out in the yard. That's right. And yes, and that actually brings tears Mm -hmm. to our eyes to see this is a legacy. Legacy. That's going on Mm -hmm. where you're talking. No, you can talk to me. That's right. And you know, the other thing I remember... Once I got married and started having kids, my father said, now, you know, it's a difference when you're raising boys. Mm -hmm. Boys are going to challenge you. They're going to break house rules. Mm -hmm. Girls will be a a bit more fearful, Mm -hmm. but the boys, they're going to automatically do it. And he told me something that will always stick with me, and I shared it with my sons. He said... Men don't start off being dogs or Mm -hmm. uh, inconsiderate of women. He said, what happens is there is a root to where it comes Mm. from. All right. All right. And it starts off with them being vulnerable, giving their heart and their emotions Mm -hmm. to a woman. Mm -hmm. And she hurts them. You're going Mm -hmm. somewhere. Yes, sir. And then that outlook, Mm -hmm. because he's put his all and all into it. Yep. Then he builds up a wall Mm -hmm. and says, I will not let another woman get inside yep. and hurt me again. Mm-hmm. So then they start saying, hey, I'm just going to go on and do yep. me. Amen. And I never even actually realized that. He said every man has had their deep love for a woman that has hurt them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And we got to honor uh-huh. vulnerability. Yes. Vulnerability. And mm-hmm. even, you know, being spiritual and churchgoers regularly and dad being a pastor, he raised us. Um, he taught us the Bible and we tried, again, not to walk in perfection, although it did spill into that. But, uh, you know, honor the word of God and walk in righteous righteousness. When the boys came to our home, my dad had to be very realistic. We did not birth these children. We're going to give them the word of God. But we also have to honor the environment that they came from. Mm -hmm. So we can let them know you should keep yourself. But he also told my mother, these are boys. Mm -hmm. They're Mm -hmm. coming from different environments, Mm -hmm. brokenness, you know, Mm -hmm. multi-living family households, things like that. So he did have to have that sex talk to say, it's our time to give it to him the right way. Mm -hmm. If you make a choice outside of how we are teaching you, this is how you prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consequences. Because there are diseases, pregnancy, everything. So these are the things that I remember Mm -hmm. how my father was different with the males that were raised in our household than with us. Yes. 
totally in agreement. And um, there is a difference. And I'm so thankful to God for the communication mm -hmm. and my father loving and accepting his girls for who we were. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no comparison Amen. and trying to make Renee me or make me uh, Teresa or Veronica. Mm -hmm. He loved me for me. He knew my strengths. Mm -hmm. He knew my weaknesses. Even now today when I was, um, I was probably in elementary school and I was having some difficulties with a math problem. Mm -hmm. And my father showed me, now you're going to do it like this. And he went over it with me, how to get the answer. Uh -huh. He said, now, repeat it back to me. Right. Well, I repeated it back to him incorrectly and ended up with the wrong answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> I got popped, but till today, when it comes down to <laughs> math, I know my math. That's right. I ain't getting popped no more. I, I said, I oh, no. Popped. I was studying. <laughs> yeah. I just he told said, you. What, what did I tell you? And uh, I just. <laughs> and But know what? I went over it again because again, I was rushing. Again. He yes. was like, slow I down. wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and he right. had yes, me sir. to None. go back over it so that I could come to the right answer. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for him today mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. he took the time. I may I didn't like, number one, I didn't like getting no beat. No. I didn't like Amen. getting a popping. I, I can see that. But I, I thank that. God that, you know what, it kept us out of jail, off Amen. of drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that we didn't have to settle for any type of man thinking they can come into our lives no and treat and talk to us mm -hmm. any kind of way. And that was because of the communication, the love, and the education. Yes, yes, we yes. got to educate and relate. That's right. And we got to also be open-minded to this new generation. That's right. And accept differences. Yes. This was our household, but each one of my sisters married men who came from different households. Yep. Yes. And yes. now we got to bring all this together. We're not going to talk about the grocery store incident with no, Octavia no, and no. Budgie, but bringing <laughs> two Amen. different households. The grocery store. <laughs> we're not going to go there, but no, we're not. accepting differences. And that's the thing that I'm thankful for Amen. is the impact that my dad has had. I look at my nieces and my nephews, how they value him. And in closing, a funny moment is my nieces, they will go out there and spend time with my dad. We all have places. We grew up where we all would pile in the bed and watch oh, TV everybody. together and have snacks. And us. that is the same yeah. thing. Well, one day I come and my dad is sitting up in his bed and my nieces are in there with them. And they say, hey, Aunt Nene, they want to make a space for me. I say, what are y'all watching? They had, this was separate occasions. My nieces had my dad walk, watching, ready for love. <laughs> And he was telling me what's going on. Nah, he ain't going to pick that one. That one. Pick that one. <laughs> then it's they had going. him watching, what is it, 16 and Pregnant. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> he said, I don't know what they got me watching. <laughs> and then he said, oh, but that mother is something. You know? <laughs> but it was quality uh -huh. time yeah, yeah, that yeah. he spends that yeah. you're able to be flexible relate. and relate mm -hmm. and tap into the likes of your loved ones. Yes. I don't like that. I don't want to see that. You know, no, it wasn't no stripper pole stuff, but you know what? Let me see what these kids uh -huh. watch. Yeah. Amen. Let me look at this dating show, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's how they're like, pop, pop, I'm coming out here. We're going, it's a marathon on, oh Lord, I'm bringing you lunch and they'll watch it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that Honoring fathers is flexibility, getting to know each other. And then there are times the grandkids will all be gathered around and he'll just talk. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll tell my, nie my nephews, Octavia's boys laugh about that lean. He said, man, I was so smooth till I would drive and I'd have my back to the driver's window leaning. 
Uh-oh. And my mother would say, he sure did. I thought he was crippled when I <laughs> He said, I was cool. I was oh, known for my cool. Chevy. Mm-hmm. So it's moment transparency, yes. being relatable, letting your child be who they are, and you take the time to teach them. Yeah. Yeah. So I am so thankful yes. for honoring our fathers. Yes. We thank you thank all for you. tuning in. We yeah. appreciate you. Yeah. We want to say happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy your yeah. day. To all the dads. Our hearts are with those who are sending a happy Heavenly Father's yes. Day. Amen. Our prayers and support are with you, and yes. we thank you yes. for joining in. And today is Saturday, June 19th. We are doing Diary of a Preacher's Kid every two weeks, and we look forward to connecting with you again on Saturday, July 3rd at 11 a.m. Please tune in, like us, love us, and share it. Yeah. Be blessed. You are now tuned into Mixation Radio Live. The views and opinions of the guests and the hosts you hear on Mixation Radio Live are not necessarily those of the staff and the management of Mixation Radio Live, its sponsors, or advertisers.